There's an entry in the diary of uh, St. Faustina regarding St. Therese, and I thought it would be um, really beautiful today, especially as we are sandwiched in this beautiful week of so much holiness. So many beautiful saints this week, you know, St. Therese, St. Faustina, St. Saint uh, Francis of Assisi, the guardian angels, you know, so many beautiful angels uh, and saints. And so I just thought I would share with you something the Lord put on my heart about St. Therese and St. Faustina. And I'll share that with you more at the end. In Notebook 1, Entry 150, it says, St. Faustina says, I want to write down a dream that I had about St. Therese of the child Jesus. I was still a novice at the time and was going through some difficulties which I could not, I did not know how to overcome. They were interior difficulties connected with in exterior ones. I made novenas to various saints, but the situation grew more and more difficult. <clears throat> the sufferings it caused me were so great that I did not know how to get uh, to go on living. But suddenly a thought occurred to me that I should pray to St. Therese of the Child Jesus. I started the novena to this saint because before entering the convent, I had a great devotion to her. And lately I had somewhat neglected this devotion. But, my need in, but in my need I began it again and I prayed with great faith, fervor. On the fifth day of the novena, I dreamt of St. Therese. But it, is, it was as if she were still living on earth. It was as if she were still living on earth. She hid from me that she, the fact that she was a great saint and began to comfort me, saying that I should not be worried about this matter, but that I should trust more in God. She said, I too suffered greatly, but I did not quite believe her. And I said, it seems to me that you did not suffer at all. <laughs> now, you're talking about a heavenly saint who's appearing, right? To St. Faustina in a glorified body, right? So she's not really sure, St. Faustina. Hmm. Um, sister, know that in three days the difficulty will uh, come to a happy conclusion, St. Therese says. When I was not very willing to believe her, she revealed to me that she was a saint. At that moment, a great joy filled my soul. And I said to her, you are a saint? She said, yes, I am a saint. Trust that this matter will be resolved in three days. And I said, dear sweet Therese, tell me, shall I go to heaven? I mean, you might as well get it all in there, right? Ask away. And she answered, yes, you will go to heaven, sister. And will I be a saint? To which she replied, yes, you will be a saint. But little Therese, shall I be a saint as you are raised to the altar? And she answered, yes, you will be a saint just as I am, but you must trust in the Lord Jesus. Then I asked her if my mother and father would go uh, to heaven. And then she leaves off the rest of the sentence. But she replied, St. Charles replied, that they would. I further asked St. Faustina, and will my brothers and sisters go to heaven? And she told me to pray hard for them, but gave me no definite answer. I understood that they too were in need of much prayer. Three days later, the difficulty, she goes on to say, was solved very easily, just as she said. And everything in this affair turned out exactly as she said it would. <clears throat> it was a dream, but it had great significance. How nice. How nice. Now, in the Magnificat, St. Therese has a beautiful prayer. If you have the Magnificat, I just want to read one piece of that um, and kind of give a little bit of a comparison. St. Therese says, and this is a prayer of hers, time is nothing in your eyes, and a single day is a thousand years. You can then, in one instant, prepare me to appear before you in order to live in one single act of perfect love, Jesus. She's talking to the Lord. I offer myself as a victim 
of Holocaust to your merciful love, asking you to consume me insistently, insistently, allowing the waves of infinite tender, tenderness shut up within you to overflow out into my soul, and that thus I may become a martyr of your love, a martyr of your love, oh my God. I want, oh my beloved, at each beat of my heart to renew this offering to you an infinite number of times until the shadows having disappeared, I may be able to tell you of my love in eternal, in an eternal face to face. There's a similar prayer in the diary of St. Faustina where she prays, let, as she's sleeping at night, getting ready to fall to sleep, she prays, let every beat of my heart beat in harmony, in love, let every beat beat for love for you, and let it be a prayer. Um, because she prayed throughout the day, you know, just a normal prayers and things that she was doing. She would talk to Jesus interiorly and say a little invocation there and a little prayer that for that one and whatever. So her day was, even though she was working and talking to the sisters interiorly, she was praying. But when she was ready to go to sleep, she was saddened because she said, you know, then I won't be praying. And then she was inspired to say to the Lord, but take every beat of my heart as a prayer of love to you, Jesus, so that she would be in a continuum of prayer. St. Therese and St. Faustina are, are very similar, very different places in the world, but very, very similar in spirituality. St. Therese had great difficulty with many irritations, like things irritated her. When the older sisters would be praying, their dentures would be clicking, it would be so distracting, and she would, you know, she would just get so... And then, you know, she just asked the Lord, help me to make this like a symphony of music. Is the kind of music, right? And, you know, um, you know, she had her difficulties. If you read the story of St. Therese, it's phenomenal, or her movie. And St. Faustina, same thing. She was, you know, she went through a lot of hardships with uh, other sisters, telling her that, you know, you, you, you really won't amount to, to much of anything. Um, you're just looking for attention with all this noise about, you know, Jesus and your, your, your having visions of him and such and, you know, all this about wanting the attention of, and having this image, you know. And then she'd go into the altar, in, into the, her chapel to pray and beautiful flowers were there adorning the altar and the, the devil would kick them over or something. And then there's St. Faustina walking in at the wrong time along with Mother Superior who's seeing her there and blames her for the flowers that were knocked over. These things are very true. These things are very true. Um, but what I, I want to finally leave you with is this, what the Lord put on my heart about St. Therese and St. Faustina. And this is from the mouth of the Lord. Just his voice said to me, in that part of the Our Father where we pray, the people of God pray, on earth as it is in heaven, right? As we pray, on earth as it is in heaven. What the Lord explained to me is that St. Therese and St. Faustina, simple, simple people, what they learned to do by the grace of God was to live on earth as in heaven. While they lived on this earth, they learned to live on this earth as though they were in heaven and only by the grace of God. Because like us, they had their irritations, their shortcomings. St. Therese did not want to clean. She didn't like cleaning. You know, it was too hard, it was very hard. She didn't want to do all those things that, that great saints, like St. Patrick, he would go around the table 2,000 times and, and offer that as a penance. She said, I'm never gonna do that. I'll never be able to do that. I don't even know if she wanted to do anything like that. but. By being simple, you know, in her simple way, by, you know, she had tuberculosis, we know that she suffered greatly, uh, ridicule from other sisters and stuff, but she would pick up a string off of the carpet. Who likes to bend down and pick up strings off the carpet? Or those little fuzzballs that, you know, your eye just won't let go, right? Or whatever, right? You gotta, you just gotta pick it up, to, you know? Um, you know, she offered that as a sacrifice. Your headaches, your toothache, your sore feet, your back aches, you know, whatever ails. She made very natural things into great sufferings. And she just felt that because she is that, had that commitment to simplicity, God would forcefully have to bend down to her to take care of her, right? 
because we that's what mothers and fathers do when their little children are crying good or bad whatever they're into you know we, we take care of them we have to they're always you know uh, causing us to bend down to them and take care of them so she would always be in the eye of the Lord and for her she preferred to be the little violet rather than the great grandeur of a rose and and in that simplicity and that humility like Saint Faustina you know loved the privacy and prayer and silence and and um, couldn't do a lot of things that the other sisters could do but she could answer the door and treat every single person like it was Jesus Christ God gave her the grace to lift the heavy pots that she, you know potatoes that she had great difficulty with and complained Lord you know that I'm I'm not well I can't I can't handle this here's that very pot he turned it into a pot of roses and she lifted it very simply by God's grace Father Peter explained to us, Father Peter from, was here um, sharing with us the secrets of St. Faustina, that one of the sisters that is, was still alive when he met with her was telling her about the personality of St. Faustina. She loved chocolate. You know, St. Faustina loved chocolate. She loved oranges. She loved jokes. She loved to tell jokes. You know, so even though there was this great spirit of contemplation and holiness and all this, you know, they ate chocolates like we did. They had irritations that they had to overcome like we did. And, and they became a doctor of the church in great wisdom, right? Here he is, a simple person. This is not someone who every day walked around the table 2,000 times. Forget that. But found ways, little ways throughout life. Is there anybody that doesn't have any sacrifices or penances or pain in the butts in, in the course of one day? Don't we all have crap we have to deal with, right? So, but we can turn that into holiness, you know? And that's how St. Saint saint Therese found her holiness, so her way of the little way. Great saint. And, and, and look how many souls can, it, you know, uh, identify with her because of the little way. We can all do something. We can all be that kind of a saint. And St. Faustina, even though she was this great, she evolved into this great mystic where she was, you know, she could bilocate, she was levitated, she, who knew all that stuff? That's so, so minor in her diary compared to the teachings of what to say, how to love Jesus, how to, you know, the other saint, great attribute that they both had in similar similarity was their, their great desire to save souls for God. And, and we know that in the diary, Jesus tells St. Faustina, my greatest desire and prayer is for souls, the salvation of souls. Well, he died for us. Of course it is. You want to please the Lord? Offer your prayers and penances as you do for your families and your intentions. But the salvation of souls, especially those who don't love God, don't know him, they both did that. Um, I think it was St. Therese. St. Therese said, I wish I could cut my heart up into a million different pieces, just tiny little pieces, and with each piece give it to you as an act of love and have it be a person's conversion. You know, have it be a person. You know, so the love of, of souls. This is something that we all can do. You know, God has it very much in his heart for each one of us to become great saints. Great as in, great in heaven. Um, and, and, and it's not by, you know, moving a big mountain. It's by living the day-to-day -day life of Christ in our heart. And even as we're washing the floor or we're doing work at work, we're offering all of these things up, right? All of the penances, the, the simple irritations uh, during the day, whatever. Like St. Faustina, two great saints to give us modern day examples of how to, to be a saint. And we all want to be a saint. There should be not one person that says, oh, yeah, not me, I know, huh? No, no, we should all aspire. And, and through leading a strong sacramental life, Eucharist and reconciliation, we can all be great saints imploring God throughout our days while we are here on earth as though we were in heaven for all of aching mankind. Even our intentions, yes, all of our intentions, but all of aching mankind, those that don't know God, those that don't love God, those that blaspheme God, those that are murderers, everyone god created all of us as his his children in his likeness and image so many fall off you know the, the like a like a precipice they just fall off the earth and, and have no one to pray for them so 
in this day, in this time, in this moment of thinking about and contemplating the life of St. Therese and St. Faustina, St. Francis of Assisi, along with the accompaniment of our own guardian angels and the archangels, all these provisions, these great provisions that God has blessed us with in our life. Let us take the words from God that he shared with us today on earth as it is in heaven. Let us live our lives on earth as though we are in heaven, right? So we always have that, we are, you know, before God and that, that constant cycle of the spiritual life. Can we pray in our Father together for all those who do not know God, for all those that blaspheme God, but through the intercession of St. Therese, St. Faustina, St. Francis of Assisi this week, um, in the accompaniment of our own guardian angels and archangels, that we may love God, we may know Him, we may serve Him and worship Him and adore Him all the days of our life, even in the simple, small ways that we go about our days. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.